these days we get television by a variety of different methods. It can be beamed into our homes via satellite, you can pick up a terrestrial signal or have it piped into your living room via cable. And the latest, and what some believe is the greatest, is Internet Protocol Television or IPTV for short. Now it's not the internet as we normally know it, in fact it's very different because IPTV, rather than giving you television over a gridlocked World Wide Web, actually uses a dedicated line. It's called a managed network and it could be the future of television. IPTV is the means that can bring broadcast uh, programs into your home, but a lot more besides. Essentially what you're doing is using a telephone line to bring in all kinds of content, television programs, multimedia, uh, right to the viewer. And the, the, the advantages are, are manifold. The first, of, the first one is the reliability of the thing. With this you press a button and you get the program right away. And this is really the distinction between IPTV and services via the open internet. People associate IPTV with the internet. But IPTV, even though it uses internet protocol, it is not the internet. Uh, it, it is dedicated to secure uh, quality of service guaranteed um, network where uh, you're, you feel uh, safer, which content you're receiving, and the content providers are also uh, um, assured that the content is securely protected. It's likely to play a key role in the future of television and radio, but unlike many mass market technologies, IPTV is avoiding the beleaguering format and standards battles that have beset much of the tech industry by adopting the ITU's new suite of common standards known as H.271. IPTV's been around quite a lot of years and it hasn't been the success that many people hoped and probably the principal reasons is that there have been a lot of IPTV's, a lot of different IPTV's, so you don't have the benefits of a large market, you don't have the benefits of uh, open markets, you don't have the benefits of competition. What we've got now is a common standard to which everybody can build equipment to and this really should make IPTV much more successful in future. Things used to be so simple, didn't they? You used to be able to buy a TV, plug it in and then pull up an armchair. Now you'll likely be faced by a rat's nest of cables and a bewildering variety of black boxes which might or might not be friends with the other black boxes you bought and all you wanted to do was watch the football. Now the ITU, through its suite of standards for internet protocol television, has brought an end to this headache. It's brought together the main manufacturers of IPTV so that they can make their products work together seamlessly. The ITU has brought the main IPT manufacturers together to its headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. IPT Interop is what the industry calls a plug fest. It makes sure everyone's working to a common technical standard. The ITU is holding similar IPTV Interop events in Singapore in September and India in December. The ITU Secretary General believes that when you get the industry together in this way, the biggest winners are the consumers. This is good for consumers because ITU's IPTV standard will give them the interoperability with many other systems. It will give them choice. It will give them the opportunity to have lower cost and of course higher quality because you have number of uh, 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 manufacturers who have been involved in producing these global standards. The aim of this test is to verify whether the, uh, the applications that we are going to test appear. The nice thing about working to a common standard is that it can bring in other devices such as mobile phones. One platform on show at IPTV Interop aggregates content from many sources, broadcasters and the internet, at the same time as synchronizing it with portable devices such as mobiles. I'll first show an application that synchronizes the content being exhibited on a television with the content being exhibited on a mobile phone. This application we have uh, some images from Rio de Janeiro and here I, I connect the, this mobile phone with the, the TV receiver and a puzzle is shown according to the image being shown on the TV screen. 
Because IPTV works like the internet but is a closed network, it could open up new possibilities for smaller content producers like individual artists or musicians frustrated in their attempts to make money from content posted on the web. As an artist, what excites me is that uh, there is now new hope for independent artists to actually live off their material, whereas uh, at the present uh, moment with the internet, uh, a lot of artists are counting on uh, things outside of their music. Hopefully we are uh, able to, it could enable the artist to uh, get their rights or access their rights a lot faster and simpler. But for that to happen, content also needs legal protection so that IPTV does not just act as a technological partner in crime to those pirating other people's content or live broadcast signals like sporting events. What this technology shows me here, IPTV, is it's another you know, fantastic opportunity and way both to get broadcast signals into the hands of consumers, uh, but at the same time opening possibilities for illegal access to those signals. So if any, anything, it, it shows the importance of, a, of an international treaty that reaches potentially many rather than few new distribution platforms for broadcast content. IPTV could be a game changer then, combining the flexibility of the internet with the high quality of professional broadcast. But consumers need to trust different devices will work together before the technology really catches on. Hosting events like IPTV Interop and formulating standards of functions the ITU is keen to take on. The organization's already won an Emmy for its role in developing a video codec H.264. The reward for the work it's doing with IPTV may well go to the consumer.